Ryzen desktop CPU sales grew by a strong double-digit percentage year-over-year, and Ryzen mobile CPU sales nearly doubled year-over-year, as new Ryzen 8040 notebook designs from Acer, Asus, HP, Lenovo, and others ramped. That's right. AMD just reported in their quarter one 2024 earnings that they have doubled revenue and clients year over year and that they are making almost double the money in mobility rise in sales. This immediately dispels the myth that AMD isn't aggressively trying to take market share in laptop. They are trying and they are succeeding. Just look at the numbers. You see, AMD has done so well in quarter one this year that they are almost flat in client revenue from last quarter, which is a holiday quarter, which traditionally would have much greater sales. Now, if you look at Intel, Intel is down in client revenue, double digits. And while they are up year over year in quarter one, they're up far less than AMD is, meaning that, yes, the client market is doing better so far this year than last year, but in terms of the market growing, AMD is eating up much more of that growing market than Intel is. You see, it's obvious. OEMs are choosing Hotpoint, not Meteor Lake. Just like I warned all of you they would do half a year ago in a controversial Broken Silicon episode where I disclosed that the OEMs I was talking to doing final validation of Meteor Lake were disgusted by Meteor Lake's complete lack of really, well, any point to using it. It wasn't consistently more efficient than Raptor Lake. Besides the integrated graphics, it wasn't consistently more performant than Raptor Lake. And overall, Phoenix still seemed kind of better, despite having been out for almost a year at that point. And many of them told me that they were now planning to switch a lot of their volume from Intel to AMD next year because they were just fed up with Intel's shenanigans and lack of performance increases gen over gen, and they thought that AMD would be far more consistent, which, if you think about that, now that it's happening, it's actually pretty damning for Intel if you dwell on the details, like the fact that Meteor Lake was supposed to be this Centrino moment that used expensive, cutting-edge technology to leave the competition in the dust, and Hotpoint is just, well, some people accuse it of being a rebrand of Phoenix. And yet, on the latest Broken Silicon, the Fox came on and confirmed that his testing was the same as mine, that Hotpoint actually was a pretty decent performance uplift over Phoenix, despite having very little effort put into it that it seems like we could even argue that hot point over phoenix was about as big of an uplift as meteor lake over raptor lake depending on what you were measuring and that's just bad i mean if amd can achieve a meteor lake like uplift with just almost the same thing going from phoenix to hot point what do you think amd is going to be able to achieve how much of this lead in laptop performance how much do you think they're gonna be able to extend their lead once they actually have a proper update like with strix that i've leaked numerous times is going to be a huge seismic uplift in performance in all metrics and laptop later this year well once you see that oems are already choosing hotpoint over a meteor lake i guess it's no surprise that lisa was able to confirm this as well in their quarter one earnings we're working very closely with Microsoft and a broad ecosystem of partners to enable the next generation of AI experiences powered by Ryzen processors. With more than 150 ISVs on track to be developing for AMD AI PCs by the end of the year. We will also take the next major step in our AI PC roadmap later this year with the launch of our next generation Ryzen mobile processors codenamed Strix. Customer interest in Strix is very high based on the significant performance and energy efficiency uplifts we are delivering. Design win momentum for premium notebooks is outpacing prior generations as Strix enables next generation AI experiences in laptops that are thinner, lighter, and faster than ever before. We're excited about the growth opportunities for the PC market and based on the strength of our Ryzen CPU portfolio, we expect to grow revenue share this year. So yeah. Already, Hawkpoint is a roaring success for AMD, and Strix is getting even more interest from OEMs than Hawkpoint did, which almost doubled revenue in mobile for AMD. I don't know what's going to happen to AMD's laptop market share, but if Hawkpoint could double, what do you think Strix could do? Well, I'm going to get into that, and now I'm going to talk about why this is a 
far bigger deal for Intel than I think a lot of people are realizing once you really dig into their earnings as well. And I'm also going to leak some new Blackwell information, including exciting information about what NVIDIA seems to be doing with the mobile RTX 5080. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but it's not always an effective way to break your bad habits, unlike with Fume. This piece of content is brought to you by Fume. The people at Fume look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic and uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad that is in the bad habit and just remove that? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. And your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is actually designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting to help break that habit with new, not as harmful habits as well, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing when you're trying to do something like this. So support Moore's Law's bed by joining Fume in Accelerating Humanity's Breakup from Destructive Habits by picking up the Journey Pack today at tryfume.com slash M-L-I-D or use that QR code on screen as well and then use the offer code M-L-I-D. If you do use the code M-L-I-D, you're helping the channel a lot and you're also saving 10% off the Journey Pack if you buy it, so you're helping yourself save some money as well. That's right, Try fum.com and then use code MLID to save an additional 10% off on your order today. All right, so I'm excited to get to some new NVIDIA Blackwell information like I teased earlier in the video. But before I get to that, I really do want to drill down on why I think Zen 5 could be the catalyst for a financial reckoning for Intel later this year. And first, I want to start with Intel's data center revenue because, well, we all know that AMD has been taking server market share from Intel over the past five years or so. It keeps happening. But I don't know if a lot of people have realized that AMD is already getting close to having the same quarterly revenue in data center and AI as Intel. And I don't see that changing when up to 192 core Turin dense processors launch in quarter three of this year against Intel's 128 core Granite Rapids. I think they're already going to take market share in server because of their CPUs. But also, if we look at comparative revenue, AMD is forecasting that they are going to bring in billions from their MI300 series products. And Intel is not forecasting that their AI products like Gaudi 3 are going to do remotely as well. So that just seems done right there. Within the next two years, it seems like AMD is going to eclipse Intel in data center and servers, which is just insane alone. But then you go, okay, so AMD's one server, I guess, and they are beating Intel and AI. Well, what about everywhere else? Well, networking and edge, that's not going to save Intel. That's worth less than half what data center is worth. And then you go, well, but client, yeah, client is actually huge for Intel. 7.5 billion there versus 3 billion in data center. In fact, it's so big that it seems to be bigger than all of Intel's other segments combined. And no, if we talk about foundries or their other stuff, that's not going to help. They're actually losing money in those other departments of Intel. It's all client then. It's all client. And in fact, client is the only segment left for Intel that actually has decent margins. Not only is it most of the revenue they're bringing in, but it's the revenue that is actually profitable at Intel. And so I just do not see how they can afford to lose that. And yet I don't see how they're not going to. As far as we can tell in desktop client right now, for example, AMD is done. They have eclipsed 50% market share in desktop. If you look at how Tech Epiphany has talked about it, and I can even see on my end, when I even just look at public information, actually, on Amazon or Newegg, you can see that at a minimum, it seems like most processors being sold, if you average it all together, on desktop are AMD right now. Okay, well, but actually... If we go back to that reporting at Tech Epiphany, it gets worse if you read between the lines, as he is now reporting, at least where he follows the information, that AM5 sales are eclipsing AM4 sales, suggesting that the AM5 platform is now finally becoming the standard in the market. Remember, you can upgrade an AM5 platform 
to Zen 5. And in fact, if I look at what's going on with the best CPU sellers in the United States, finally, it's not just the flashy stuff. The cheaper 7600X is showing up a lot all of a sudden right now in the top 10 as well. And, you know, I can't help but think that a lot of those purchases of 7600Xs are people that are buying the cheaper CPU to upgrade to Zen 5 later this year. And with that, I can bring my overall point full circle. Yes, it is damning that Hotpoint seems to be making big inroads in laptop market share despite not being a full next-gen architecture against Meteor Lake. That's very damning. And yes, it's also damning that AMD seems to be cementing majority market share over Intel before they even launch Zen 5. But what makes all of this far more scary for Intel and what should be making Intel investors so scared is the fact that all of this is happening now with things that can be frictionlessly upgraded to Zen 5. All of these laptops that OEMs are favoring to put Hawkpoint into over Meteor Lake, those laptops can have Strixpoint dropped into it without any changes. And all of those people buying up AM5 now in large volumes over AM4, AM5 can be upgraded to Zen 5. It's not just bad that the lack of new stuff out there, AMD is still beating Intel. It's the fact that all of the stuff people are buying right now is stuff that's going to turn into Zen 5 before Intel even has an answer to it. And I just don't see what Intel can do about this because I do not hear good things right now. I hear OEMs are fed up that they're actually having tons and tons of software issues with Intel products, not just in, in desktop with the baseline stuff, but laptops are becoming more and more unstable. Like Intel just doesn't have the resources to properly support their products anymore. And so I just think it's going to happen. They're going to lose client market share and that is the last fortress intel had data center is already done intel foundries is not able to turn a profit like tsmc can and tsmc is now getting funding from the u.s government to build amd chips inside the united states they've lost desktop and uh yeah i just don't i'm not gonna say intel is doomed but i do not think they are done bottoming at a minimum. And when it comes to AI, NVIDIA just seems poised to maintain a dominant position and AMD seems poised to take 10 to 20% of that market while Intel will be lucky to get even 5% of AI. But uh, yeah, <laughs> on that cheery note, NVIDIA, I just mentioned them. Let's do a quick Blackwell update, shall we? Because this is actually pretty exciting. I'm just going to throw the quote on screen right now, not waste any time. So a few sources that I've spoken with over the past couple of weeks one of them tells me that they are annoyed that they have to say this, but right now, all of a sudden, this person at NVIDIA is getting the impression that contrary to what has been reported recently, they are no longer 100% sure that the 5080 will be launching this year with the 5090. They are still 100% sure the 5090 is coming this year, though, and that, in fact, it definitely sounds like they're unveiling it Computex, and that it may even be sale for sale by early quarter four of this year. Then a second source, someone who works at an AIB, recently told me that they were told by NVIDIA that quarter three or quarter four will be when the next series will launch to desktop. And you see, I reached out to this person after talking to that first source and going, hey, remember how you said Blackwell GPUs are launching this year? What do you mean by GPUs? And this person told me that technically they were just told the new series was launching this year. They were not told what quantity or which cards are launching. So... At least one card will launch, but technically they can't verify it will be more than the 5090 either. Now, a third source that I reached out to actually disclosed far more than I expected. This person who works at an OEM said that based on where they are in Blackwell testing, that they would estimate that the laptop lineup is maybe one to two months behind in development compared to where Lovelace was at this point in 2022. That to remember, though, that they are only working on laptop dies. So in other words, they don't have any clue when the 5090 or 5080 desktop GPUs will be ready, but the laptop lineup isn't ahead of schedule or anything. But then also said something really interesting that the heat resistance on the laptop 5090 and 5080 dies are the same this time around, suggesting that the laptop 5080 uses GB203, not something like 204 or 205, that they can also confirm that even some mobile chips they are testing will be using GDDR7 and PCIe 5.0. So it sounds like this time around, most of the lineup, or at least more than just the top card, is getting the most advanced technology, and that additionally, 
if you really drill in on what that would infer, that would infer that NVIDIA is probably going to give at least 16 gigabytes of RAM to the laptop 5080 instead of skimping. And I would then suggest that it's probably likely they're going to give the RTX 5070 at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM and laptop as well. But, you know, when I say this out loud, I don't think that's actually that surprising at all. If NVIDIA wants to compete with Strix Halo, which, you know, again, there's videos out there from this channel that you can look into that incredible AP with a 256-bit bus that can use hundreds of gigabytes of RAM. Well, then they need to because it can use hundreds of gigabytes of RAM. And games right now need more than 8 gigabytes. It really doesn't matter if the RTX 5070 laptop uh, GPU is going to be stronger than Strix Halo because it will be. It doesn't even need to be 203, I think the die below that will probably be stronger than Strix Halo as well. But if it only had eight gigabytes of RAM, or if the 5080 didn't have at least 16, then there's going to be a lot of scenarios where it just doesn't feel like an enthusiast laptop. And so, yeah, actually, I think it's probably common sense why NVIDIA would be doing this, why they would be bumping up the amount of RAM and the performance of the Blackwell laptop chips per tier of this generation because they're going to be having far more competition out of AMD and laptop this year. And they're going to need to meet that with an even more competitive lineup than they really had to even bother doing last generation. All right, so that is going to do it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you check out the sponsor. And if you're interested in their product from Fume, you know, support them. They supported me. And then also subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Ring the bell button. Uh, give us a like. Please share this video. Comment for the algorithm. And then also consider joining the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. At the right here, you'll be able to ask free questions for the Loose Ends live stream. One is coming up at the end of this week, and you can ask questions for it for free. And then even the cheapest tier on Patreon gets you access to hundreds of episodes of Die Shrink. A new episode will be coming out this week as well. Always ad free. It's just like a bonus one hour long video just for patrons. And there's really just so much content out there right now on the Patreon that is consistently ad free. And well, speaking of ads, basically we don't get revenue from YouTube anymore for whatever reason. A lot of YouTubers are talking about this. So it's really never been more important to support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. That is what is putting food on the table for me, Dan, Gerard. Carbon Cry, Jean Philippe, there's a whole team of people here that can really use your support and you will get rewarded with tons of content if you support us there. But you know what? No matter what, though, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>